<laughs> Good morning, everybody. We have lift off. We have a nice floater too. Literally lift off here. <laughs> Good morning again from Asakusa. Quiet day, quiet morning so far. It's going to be hot, I guess. It was hot yesterday. Maybe we had our hottest day of the year so far in Tokyo yesterday. Bright blue sky all the way through, beating down. It was hot. Not sure what's forecast for today. The shop is mixed. We have uh, busy, busy days. Nothing like spring. Busy in quotation marks. And we have really, really quiet days. We have no idea which it's going to be on any given day. And it's nothing to do with the day of the week or whether it rains. There can be nice days that are quiet, rainy days that are busy. You know, when people are, are traveling, you know, they've already planned weeks, months in advance what days they're going to be in Tokyo, what days they're going to be in, in Osaka, stuff like that. So the actual weather or the day of the week or whatever doesn't affect so much the traffic that comes through here to tourists. You know. So we can't tell. The problem from our point of view then is it's totally, absolutely unpredictable. We, ha we have to always have a full complement of staff here. You know, we've got three people, sometimes four, every day because sometimes it really, really is busy. And one of my challenges now, actually, now that it has getting quieter and quieter, is to decide what to do. Do I cut back one staff member each day? Do I try and find alternate work for them to do? You know. It's a seasonal business. Our, our overall business is not. Our subscription prints runs all through the year. But this room, this shop, is very much a seasonal business. Okay, stuff to clean up. I've got my New York Times puzzle. He he he, ready for it's the Sunday puzzle, you know. This is actually Saturday, but the way we get the newspaper here, this New York Times, is it comes as a single one for Saturday, Sunday. So this is, you guys are over there in Friday. This is the newspaper, New York Times, for Sunday, July the 7th. <laughs> Where are the stock market numbers? If only. John is saying, find alternate work for them. Well, of course, this is what we're doing. Of course, of course, of course. I know it, the back room here in the shop is, is overstocked prints, prints that are packed, ready to go. We don't have every print that we've ever prepared in the shop at any moment. We've got room for a certain number of prints, and then there's overstock in the back. And if you go back, whatever, January, February, what Nabisan and I had been buying, buying, buying tons of prints and the staff was, they were stacking up in the back and the staff's going, Dave, what's going on? This stuff's getting in the way. We just, it's trouble, trouble, trouble. And I'm like, just shut up, relax. And March and April, that stuff, of course, disappeared completely. Now the back room is empty again. So we have to spend the next couple of months, July and August, building up and packing and getting it ready. And my joke to them a few months ago was that, pack them and stack them. So John's asking the Wednesday stock market numbers on Monday evening. Yeah, if only that's how it worked, you know, Japan would be <laughs> rich. The people who live at the leading edge of the time zone flow. If only that's how it worked. Okay, we're going to be having tracing today. I'm back to the calligraphy. This is a bunch of interesting stuff. There's a huge number of things to talk about. Let me hold this for now. Let me hold it for a few minutes. I'll put it here at the side so I can see it, and I'll chat with you about that later. We had a very, very interesting visitor from uh, from Germany who brought uh, brought gifts. <laughs> Oliver, he's a fun, fun guy. He might be listening here this morning, I guess. I'm not sure. So, I'm not sure about the volume of work here. This calligraphy could be finished quite quickly, and I don't have... Well, we'll see. We'll see what else we can do. Let's get this set up. You remember where we were, what we're up to. 
There are five characters on this. I'm still not quite sure of the stroke order of the one in the middle here. We'll try it as a layout, but before I start carving, I'll get confirmation of what it looks like. <laughs> Bunch of topics, you know, things that people have reminded me about. Or when I looked through the chat from the other day and I realized there's questions came in that I didn't get to answer and stuff like that. So we have a... Has Dave seen the new Japanese currency? No, not yet. And there's no way I could see it yet. It's whatever. It's a thing. There are people out there who really want to get a hold of this stuff and they really want to get low serial numbers and all that kind of stuff. And every bank office in town, what is it today, Saturday? What was it? When, when did it hit? Wednesday afternoon, Thursday? I don't remember. The big major central bank released the money bit by bit. There was pictures in the newspapers of trucks full of forklifts full of money being thrown around. And all kinds of people wanted to get their hands on this. So the banks, I walked by, I was out to get my lunch, walked by a bank. There was a line up down the street. There were people with signs, stand here at the end of the line, all that kind of stuff, you know. I wanted nothing to do with that, absolutely nothing to do with that. So I kept out of the way. And I haven't followed the news. Has it settled down or not yet? I don't know. No idea. At the pool the other day, it would have been Thursday morning, one of the regular members there, we were gathered around before going in, and he was really, really cheesed off at something. He was in, He was standing aside. He was talking to himself. He was so pissed off at us. And somebody made the mistake of asking him, hey, hey, uh, what's, what's up with you this morning? And he says, it's a bank. I went to the bank yesterday. And he started this rant about going to the bank. And we, we looked at Sato-san. And why did you start him off? <laughs> so I want nothing to do with that stuff. So short answer, long answer to a quick question. No, I haven't seen the new money. <laughs> they were announced years ago. I saw the designs. I personally don't think it's good design. Uh, I think there's one howler. There's a terrible howler in the, in the set. There's three new banknotes. And there's a grotesque graphic design mistake on one of them. And not just me that thinks so. You know, people, anybody involved in, in graphic design and stuff, they're just face palming. Committee, it's committee work, obviously. Different people had their hand in the design. Group A designed this, group B designed that. They got stuck together. I think we talked about it when the. Uh, when they were announced some time ago. Yeah, we did talk about it, you know. Dave is trying not to be a, a grammar police or a font police type of person, but uh, that one is unbearable. No, John's got it. They didn't fix the mismatch numbers, of course. Yeah, so, so, so. Someone's a graphic designer. I'm sorry, I've teased this without having, I wasn't ready to start this conversation today, so I don't have a link here. But if you go, if you just, just Google anything, Google new Japanese currency, there's three bills. There's a 1,000, a 5,000, and a 10,000. You, you can find images everywhere in the net. Just, just, uh, just Google the new, new Japanese currency and you'll see. And maybe it won't bother you, I don't know. But uh, when there's a 1,000 note, and a 5,000 note, you expect the 1 and the 0 and the 5 and the 0 to come from the same font face, right? And then when they make the 10,000 yen note, the 1 and the 0 might presumably come from the same font face as the 1,000 note. That would be a nice thing to think about. <laughs> Thank you. 
I get it that their main priority is not uh, typefaces. Their main priority is uh, counterfeiting, of course. So, uh, you know. Someone's asking, did the old ones have the same mismatch? You know, honestly speaking, I don't remember. I'm sorry. Do they? I wouldn't have thought so, but I, I am not going to, I'm not going to, don't quote me on that. I don't know. Maybe it's not a bug. Maybe it's a feature. Someone's telling us the old ones did too. So there it is. It's a tradition. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it's a tradition. Is there a reason for that? Can you think about it? Did it make a differentiate, make people sure that they've got the right bill and they're not making a mistake with it? Would that be a reason for using a different, uh, a different serif? Differentiation. Your guess is as good as mine. It is causing you, if you've seen news reports on this, you, you, you will have seen this mentioned many times. It's causing massive headaches for any kind of company that has ticket machines where, you know, people put money in and buy tickets. You know, it doesn't affect us here at all. And the big, big, big companies like the 7-Eleven, all the cash registers now are, you know, the customers put their money into a slot. The machine chuck, 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 checks it. And at the other end, brrr, all that stuff happens. So the massive places like 7-Eleven or the huge department stores, they've been on this for years. The new money was uh, announced and talked about and the specifications were announced to those uh, companies many, many years in advance. But what's really hurting is small, small shops that have a ticket system for buying their food. And they've just got some clunky old machine that they've had for 55 years. And these machines can't read the new bills. And they are expensive. Expensive. Something could it be for blind people. Are you trolling me? There was another story just about that same thing in my newspaper this morning that I noticed. I know, uh, one of the major bus companies in Japan, I guess all of them, I guess, have the same problem. When you get on a bus or whatever in Japan, usually these days you get off, you get on the back door and you get off at the front door. And most of us are paying with tap cards, of course. We're paying with a, you know, a Suica card or a Passmo card or a, pre, a pre, prepaid card. I don't know the number, 80%, 90% of the people on a, on a bus pay with a, a card. Uh, of course, there's a cash option. You put your cash option in. And of course, there's a bill thing. You stick your bills in. I know the drivers don't carry change. It's all automated. You put your bill in, the change comes out of the machine. The driver can't touch it. He has no access to it. He can't give you, feed your change, whatever. And of course, a number of these bus companies, they haven't updated these machines because it's extremely expensive to update the machine on every single bus. And there's only X percent of the people paying by cash. And that's decreasing day by day by day. So from their point of view, this is happening at the worst possible time. Come on, give us five more years on the old money, we would have been okay. Nobody would be using it anymore. And they're expected to spend thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars on each machine in each and every bus. So of course they're not doing this, they're just using the old machines. And the idea being if you've got on the bus on the back and you traveled, and now you're getting off and you're supposed to pay based on how far you've traveled, if all you've got is a new bill, boom, what's happening? So the bus company announced the policy. At that point, you turn around and announce to the people on the bus, I've only got a new thousand yen bill. Can somebody change for me with an old one? <laughs> that's, that's how they're asking the public to get them through this, uh, this problem.
announcing brand new bills that the old machines can't read right on the cusp of the death of cash. Yeah, we're talking about the blind thing. Of course, there are physical differences. We're talking about the difference in a serif on the font is not visible to a blind person, but the bills are physically touchable, different. Of course, that's been in place for, for many, many, many times, of course. There's no issue here with blind people. I thought you were trolling me about the font. They can't tell if there's a serif on the printed font or not. <laughs> Good conversation. I'm missing it. I don't know. I don't know your links. I'll look at some of them later if I have a minute. Was it a font free for all on those old bills? I don't know. I really didn't notice. The same, we will forget the new ones as well. So. <laughs> Sorry to start a, a train wreck if that's what it's become. My apologies. Just, it's in the news here, so. So I'm saying, any particular reason I move my tablet palm up, palm up. I'm not quite sure what you mean. We talked about why I'm rotating it. It's easier for me to rotate it around to get a good angle here than it is actually to rotate the image inside the tablet. The particular software I'm using is uh, the particular way I'm using it. There's multiple layers here and I want to part way along be opening and closing different layers. And this software doesn't allow me to do opening layers separately if they are locked together. If they are not locked together, I can't rotate the image inside the pad. So I'm not sure about the question. Why do I move my tablet palm up? Sorry, I don't know what you mean. For the second day this week, yesterday, I also escaped from the uh, building here. I went over to what's called here Biz Comfort. It's, a, it's an outside office, a WeWork type of place. I have a, a membership there, a drop-in membership. And they're still a fairly new company, and not too many people know about them yet. They're a little bit overbuilt. Their building is seven floors full of uh, cubby holes and workstations and private rooms and phone-free rooms and uh, rooms where you're allowed to take a coffee with you but the next room you're not allowed to drink in case that bothers people. 
The first room you can have coffee and you're allowed to have, and there's a little sign there. It's got a picture of a round thing with twisty things on each side. And it says you're allowed to do that in this room. And in the next room, where you're not allowed to drink, you're not allowed to have a round thing with twisty sides on it. And what they're trying to tell you, the message is noisy candies or noisy food. In the real quiet room, not only can you not have coffee, you're not allowed to take anything that would have a sound when you unwrap it. <laughs> it's cool. I love this place. I, I'm not being here sarcastic at all. I'm like... Yeah, when I want to be quiet, it's a nice place to go. So, and I guess, as I said, it's still under undersubscribed. So, I went over there again yesterday morning, about 9.30 or so. I said hello to the staff and then said, see you later, guys. I'm out of here. I was out of there until about 2 o'clock. I'm working on video script, the next script for the, the script for the next video. And uh, I could maybe ask you about this. I know, not that I need advice, but... Uh, the video is going to be about, of course, paper making our paper problem and work with the paper making project we've got underway and stuff like that. Now, this is actually a kind of a vast topic. And what I've done and what I'm doing at the moment with this quote unquote planning scripting process is I'm sort of just dumping everything out and I will try and make sense of it in, into a, a sensible production package. But the problem is how far back to go. People here on the stream who've been watching us recently know basically what I'm already talking about. They know what our paper problem is. They know what kind of issues we have to face. But in a YouTube video that I produce and put out in a couple of weeks, the people who come to that video will have zero, zero, zero background. So I have to introduce, one, the fact that we make woodblock prints and they're on a Japanese paper, you know, and whatever. And how far back do I go? How much explaining do I do to be able to get to the point, Dave? What is this video about? And I'm very much struggling with that right now. So step one is to just dump this all out. And I think what I might do then is uh, clip the key points, put them on index cards, and just like the old way to do that, try and shuffle the cards together into a form that makes sense as a, as a story and as a thread. You're still talking about Japanese money. <laughs> Six conversations going on at the same time back there. So I've been, as I said, I've been, I've been putting together the points that I want to talk about on this video. And yesterday, before I came back from the Biz Comfort, and I, I tried a, a run through myself, you know, not speaking out loud. You're not allowed to do that in that place. But I, I tried a silent walk through this presentation. And we got to a point, let me quote here, I think, did I mention this the other day? I don't know. Where's the script? Video on the washi situation. So, I got to a point where it's blah, 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 it's hosho paper all the way down, and it always will be. Okay, that was the introduction to today's video presentation. Now, let's get to the meat. I got to that point in my planning, checked the stopwatch, 50 minutes. So it took 50 minutes for me to get to the point where I felt that was the introduction. Now let's start the actual video. <laughs> so obviously the common sense thing might say, Dave, look, you've got here, really, you've got part one, part two, or maybe part one, part two, part three. But I've learned over the years with our YouTube channel that really, 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 it doesn't work like that. I've tried to make things like that before that had part one, two, three, and four. The rickshaw cart print, the fox moon print, and it never works. The, the, the statistics of people who see this and which one they see next, it doesn't even remotely track. They don't start with number one, go to number two, go to number three, go to number four. People just don't 
consume YouTube videos this way. They just get a random thing, they watch it or not. So I don't want to break this up into parts. Yeah, the idea then would be to make a light version and a long version. Do a light version that's only 10 minutes long. There's a real cut and dried story. If you really want to hear it in more detail, click here. Get your seatbelt on, grab some popcorn and sit back. That might be another approach. But again, that's not the way people arrive at YouTube. YouTube is going to put something on the right hand side and I can't control that. This is pretty ugly stuff, you know, how much do I neaten it up, you know. Anthony, how much do I neaten it? John's good, that's what playlists are for, if people actually use those, John. 99% of people, I don't know the number, a huge number of people, most people don't use playlists, period. As also he's mentioned, there's a ton of two-hour videos. I know I get this all the time. I know every single time. I know this has got to be without exception. Every single time, I get to the end of the, one of the videos and I say something like, "You know, well, thank you very much for watching so far. It's really gone on longer than I had planned, and I'm, you know, blah 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 blah." I say something like this, and the comments are inevitable. It's not long enough. It's not long enough. It's not long enough. It's not long enough. So I don't. As I said, at the moment, I'm just dumping it into a huge package and then I will decide, try and decide what to do with it. Part of it is that this is all the introduction to what is going to be an ongoing thing over the next year slash couple of years. It's not a finished story. We are embarking on a journey here to be involved with paper making. And this whole thing is actually just the introduction to what is going to clearly be a long series of videos. So maybe I should treat it like the Great Wave thing. At the beginning there, I just made a video, the Great Wave. I don't think I even said it was episode one. And then a short time later, I did another one called it episode two. And those who want to take the time and trouble can uh, dig through. Yeah, the, you know, I'm hungry and I'm full, you know. There's this viewpoint too. What's, what's the thing they say in show business? You know, leave them wanting more, this kind of stuff. instead of trying to wrap it all up. Someone's mentioning, I think John's mentioning there, I should talk to media people and interest them in my efforts to preserve Japanese paper. There's, there's no way that's going to happen. I know the people up there in Echizen, for generations now, literally for generations, have been, there are people up there busting their ass to do just this. I know the preservation of Japanese culture in some key areas, and Washi is one of them, has been going on since before I was born. There were tax breaks being given to people, there were special museums being constructed. In that place where we're going, there are four museums, paper-making, culture, history museums, four of them within the space that you could throw a baseball, that Dave could throw a baseball, not otani -kun. This sort of stuff has been going on for ages, and it's still going on. 
So it's, there's nothing that I can bring to the table in that sense. And I'm not in any way going to get involved with promoting myself as I am going to help preserve this culture. The same way, the same approach that we've done with woodblock printmaking over the years. I could care less about preserving this. I couldn't, couldn't care less <laughs> about preserving this culture. And we're going to, with the paper making, we're going to do exactly the same thing. We're not going to preserve anything. We are just going to try and make products that are of interest to people and usable by people. So that approach, hey, come and watch me while I help preserve Japanese culture, that's not going to be part of it. Rope in Adachi. We have issues there. Boy, oh boy, oh boy, do we have issues there. It goes so far deeper than any of you know. A couple of things I can toss out. I don't know. You could Google this. I don't have anything prepared to talk about and show you. If you Google I don't know, NHK planning up TV programs coming up, uh, let, me, let me find a, a link here. Just a second. This, there's an important point here. One second. NH. Okay, TV uh, students, let's tie up. Japanese link. Mm. Here we are. Here's a link. Okay, one sec. If you don't know about this, here's a link. Here's a link. Here's a link. There's a thing in Japan called the Taiga Drammer. Uh, drammer. Uh, the Taiga Drammer. It's a long, 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 long-running tradition on NHK. More before, long before I came to the country. They do a massive year-long uh, melodrama type thing. It's a historical reenactment type thing. It's based on historical facts, but of course it's all dressed up hugely. Uh, you know, they, they don't try and make people do stuff that wasn't done historically, but whatever. Anyway, the one coming up for 2025 is the one I just mentioned here in this link. Look at the theme. an Edo period publisher known for introducing ukiyo-e woodblock prints. And he's really, he's one of the key people. If you had to name one person, Stai Jusabro is the one key man at the center of the Edo ukiyo-e print development during his generation. Now, of course, they are going to need NHK. Their actors don't know how to make woodblock prints, so the actors are going to act but they, they are going to need scene after scene after scene for all year long. And this has already started. They are going to need workers who know how to make Japanese woodblock prints. But people who look the part of a 1792 printer. And this, of course, this is where Adachi is coming in. And Adachi right now must be over the moon. Absolutely over the moon. This has nothing to do with Mokohanka. They won't be coming here at all. They're not going to use me. They're not going to use our workshop. It's nothing, zero to do with us. It's going to be all about Adachi. Of course, of course, of course. And when Adachi got this news, or maybe they were part of getting this set up. I have no idea what's going on in the background to get this all going. I know absolutely nothing about this. I'm just a consumer here watching this news happen. <laughs> the year-long running program about the making process of Japanese woodblock prints, you know. No, I wasn't asked. I would not be asked. Those people, I'm zero to those people. You guys don't understand, you know. I am zero. I'm off the radar. Okay, we have a basic setup for our calligraphy. Some of them are uglier than I like, but again, I'm really fighting with myself to try and stop cleaning all this up. This is what Oksai or his pupil wrote. I think this is what we're going to get. And again, we come back to the same point. 
whatever it looks like at this scale is one thing, but it's going down to about, where's the size of the print? A bit smaller than that. That's the scale it's going to. There's my hand. This calligraphy will be at this scale. There's my finger. And here's an example from the one Taransan just finished. This is the calligraphy Taransans. We mentioned he worked really hard to try and do omote ura on each of these things. I am not specifically thinking in those terms, not when the calligraphy is this small. All right, so we finished the fabric outlines, we finished the face, we finished the hair. As I mentioned many times, the explosion lines are going to be put in all over on a desktop computer because I can use a desktop computer with a mouse to structure straight lines far easier than I can do it here on the laptop. Maybe there's a way to do it, pin a start point, automatically draw a line to the finish point, but I don't know how to do that in this Photoshop on this particular, uh, in, in this software, on this particular uh, machine. So what time is it now? It's 8.36. The, uh... <laughs> 8.36. There is other work I could do here. I had mentioned before about the kimono patterns. What I had thought of doing was this, that because the kimono patterns end up being replicated around the thing, what they've done here, you can see, for example, there's a curly pattern here, a curly pattern here, some other, another curly pattern. There's two different types of kimono patterns. Some have straight lines. Oh, wait, what's this? This is an arm, it's a leg. I haven't finished the leg yet. Look at that, I didn't finish the leg. Let's go. How much time do I have for this project? This is the September print. At the moment, as we speak, July 6th, for the past few days, this print, the one Taransan carved for us, has been flowing out to subscribers. The printing, for the most part, the first uh, 200 copies are already printed and from last week flowing out to July 20th those copies will go to subscribers. At the moment these blocks are in the hands of Chiharu-san, Kawai Chiharu-san, and she's printing the next 200 copies. They will go out in the last half of July. I have to get this thing finished kind of soon now. It should have been finished July 1st was our, our scheduled target date so that I could then start carving. And the idea is through the month of July, I will carve the blocks. Theoretically, they'd be ready for the printers at the 1st of August. They have lots of time to work on it. We ship 1st of September. So that's the, uh, that's the uh, timetable. We are in no way at the moment under any time stress. But uh, if I don't get carving soon, I will be under stress later in the month, so. Because I'm busy, I'm going up. I'm going out to Ome one day next week to do some preparation of boxes. And then I'll be going to Fukui Prefecture for two, perhaps three days the week after that. So I've got, uh, I've got stuff to do.
I had a bit of an unusual experience last night. Uh, I was out of here, actually. Uh, when we finished the work, shut the shop down at 5.30. Myself and the other employees who were here, we went out for the evening. We had been invited, all of us together, to the home of one of the other employees, a lady who uh, wasn't working yesterday. She, one of our part-time employees, uh, some months ago, she had had an accident at home, nothing to do with, uh, with work or anything like that at all. But she had had an accident at home involving the kitchen and some hot water and had severely, uh, severely burned herself. I think we talked about this. And she had been required to be off work for uh, nearly a month. And uh, people took over her work, took over her shift. We supported, you know, we, uh, we, we paid her for the month anyway, even though she couldn't come to work and stayed at home. So the team here was pretty good. I don't know, visiting her in hospital. I visited her a few times, took some books in hospital and stuff. And, uh, we did the normal stuff that you do for, you, for one of your team members. We just do the normal stuff and took care of her. But she felt at the time that we had done sort of too much. And, oh, my God, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. So last night was a little... Uh, a little thank you party from her. She and her husband cooked up a ton of great food and uh, invited us all over. But, uh, it's no big deal, but the thing is, I didn't get out of there till 10, 10.30, 10.45. I'm normally in bed by 10. I didn't get out of there till 10.35, and it was the other side of Tokyo. So I wasn't home till after midnight. It's a party animal, Dave. I'm not hungover. It wasn't that kind of party. I just had one drink. And one of the other ladies who works here, Mieta san from Holland, she works here part time and she also works in a, in a Dutch pub in Tokyo part time. So she, her function last night was mixing drinks. So. But one, that's all I could take. One of what she mixed. And I had some sips of this and thought, this is my limit. So how many times did I get passed this morning? John, today is Saturday. Today is Saturday. But if you want to push the question, on Friday, she didn't pass me. I got a big zero. On Friday, my score was a big, big, fat zero. And this is one of those scores where lower is better. I got a zero. It was all so funny when we came home. The five, five of us, yeah, five of us left here together. So we, we took two subway trains to get over to Marcella's house. Five of us left here together. But when people were leaving, people left at different times. For example, Teiko san was there. She goes a long, long way. So she left early because she goes such a long way home. But when we broke up, boom, 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 we're all going in different directions. So I ended up coming back towards this direction with one of the other girls, I know, Naomi san. She's, uh, she's from, from Holland also. And she's, my God, she's a baby. She's 20-something, 20, 20 I don't know, whatever, whatever. And at one point, we made our change. We got off the Marunouchi subway line. She and I walked across to the Ginza line. We get on the train. It's full. We're standing up there, strap hanging, whatever. <laughs> I look at her and the people in front of us, and she's thinking, you know, maybe somebody here should, like, stand up. Because Dave here is 72 years old and he's a bit tired and it's late at night, you know, I'm hanging there. And in front of us on the bench, we're like, of course, it's all, all kids, everybody, exactly what it is. It's just like this, boom, 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 boom. No one's looking up. And I'm not expecting someone to give me their seat. I'm okay. I'm a big boy. It was okay. But the point of the conversation here is she and I looked at this and they were all little kids, like teenagers or 20s. And then we looked down the lens of the train car and there it was. And she, did, she looked at me, and I, she didn't say it, but I know what she's thinking. I said, you know, Nami-san, how come I feel like I'm the oldest person in this whole metropolis? I'm the oldest person in Tokyo right now. And we looked down the train car and the train and everything. And that's right, there's nobody even remotely my age. And this was 11 o'clock or 11.30 in a subway in Tokyo on Friday night. And with no exaggeration, absolutely, there was nobody even remotely my age in the subway car. And on most days of the week, I wouldn't be there earlier. I said, I'm in bed by 10. <laughs> so, 
<laughs> but here I was in this crazy environment. Not even close. I mean, any nobody in there could have been out of their 20s. I don't know. I can't tell, but my God. And there wasn't a person, and I'm sure this is no exaggeration, there wasn't a person on that train who wasn't either doing the thing with their phone or standing and talking to somebody, doing the thing with their phone or doing something with their phone together. It's phones front to back now. Phones front to back. John is pushing it a bit too far here. Aren't I supposed to be sweeping the sidewalk at 4.30? I haven't done any sweeping yet, John, today. I know the normal routine at our shop here is shop staff starts to arrive at 9.30. They have a window of arrival because people's train times differ. The shop staff arrives on or near 9.30. The shop itself opens at 10. This is all sort of planned and theoretical. So during that window from 9.30 to 10 is when cleaning happens. They do the cash drawer check to verify the amount of money. They ho ho hose down the bathroom. They wipe down the bathroom. We uh, go over the floor either with a broom or with a wet mop, depending on the condition of the floor. And yeah, somebody goes outside with the, uh, with the sweeper and hits the, uh, hits the sidewalk outside. And this all happens every morning between 9.30 and 10. And then once it gets closer to 10, or earlier if people are already waiting outside, boom, on go the lights and up goes the shutter. So it's not really, on a normal day, it's not really my job. If there's a specific problem, if somebody has left a revolting mess on the sidewalk, then when I get back from my pool, I do clean it up. I don't wait for uh, the staff members to get here. But on a normal day, when we're just looking at normal sweeping and there's no specific ton of garbage, I leave it for the staff at 9.30. The phones, you're talking about the phones. There was one last night, Naomi San and I were standing there, there was a bunch of girls next to us. And the girl next to me was using her thumb to play a game. She was doing something else with her other hand. She had her phone in one hand and she was playing a kind of game that involved swiping stuff. It wasn't like a falling, punching game. I don't know what it was. She had to move stuff around. And her thumb was like, it was like watching some kind of octopus. There's this giant thing moving around this screen, and it was her thumb. But she also had some artificial kind of, what are they called? You know, um, it's a nail, fingernail. So she had some kind of artificial, huge, long fingernail with jewelry on it and sort of stuff hanging over it. And I thought like, how does this girl wipe her bum? I don't know, <laughs> whatever. But anyway, she's doing this and there's this huge sword on it or whatever. I don't even know what they're called. Just the world is so alien to me now. I see these things happening and it's not a prosthesis. It's just decoration. You know, people are doing decoration. So at this point, you know, I'm, I'm watching this and I look at Naomi-san, do you see what I'm looking at? Naomi-san looks, you know, so I look at Naomi-san and I'm again like, what do you think? You know, and she's just like, whatever. <laughs> so <laughs> it wasn't just her thumb, it was everything. Girls have this, they've got these huge long fingernails, you know. My God, talk about making life difficult for yourself. Yeah, it doesn't take much to shake day one train trip on a subway one evening in Tokyo, you know. The food in the little get-together, the food was so nice. Marcella San and her husband, they went overboard. They're a mixed culture couple. This is not a Japanese culture couple. Marcella San is from Mexico, Mexico, I guess, and her husband is French, and they're living here in Japan. And uh, they got two little boys, and... Uh, 
they're, they're, uh, and of course they're speaking English as well uh, to all of us. So the languages that are going around in that house, my God. The two little boys are native French, native Spanish, and they spend all day at a Japanese uh, daycare center. So they're picking up Japanese all day long. So these two kids, these two little boys, they're, they're trilingual, being building trilingual. And English is not in their language. So those of us who were visitors at the house last night, who, you know, when we tried to talk to the boys, nope, English doesn't work. French or Spanish or Japanese. The kids, one of the kids, he comes and jumps up on me and he shows me a new book he's got. It's dinosaurs. This kid's, he's not even three, he's just two and a half or something. <laughs> Super cute little kid. He's got a book about dinosaurs and he's trying to explain this stuff to me. And he's like doing it, sort of starts in French. And I'm like, sorry guy, I, I don't understand French. And he doesn't understand the English that I've spoken to him. So his mother yells over, you know, use Japanese, you know, and whatever. So, so he's trying to explain dinosaur names to me in Japanese. And it's a game. And what he's done is he's opening this book to the place where he's got the dinosaur pictures. And they've all got a magnetic plastic dinosaur. So this little two-year-old boy, eyes bright as the sun, picks up this, this dinosaur, this dinosaur plastic shape. And he asked me, he asked me in French first, what is this? And I can understand that much French, so I try and answer, oh, what is this? And Dave hasn't, like, done dinosaurs for, well, I've never done dinosaurs. They weren't that much of a big deal in the 1950s and 60s. But, yeah, okay, so Dave is thinking, uh, that's a stegosaurus. And he looks at me, boop, and he's got a different name for this. And I guess all the names of dinosaurs have really kind of changed over the years. What I thought was a, a brontosaurus is now called something else. And they've all got sort of morphed, I guess. What I knew about dinosaurs was all, has all been old science and, and blown out the window. So this kid, he's on top of the new stuff. He doesn't know it's new stuff, whatever. So he's teaching me all these dinosaur names in a bizarre mix of French and Spanish and Japanese. So, John said, talk about dinosaurs and the conversation, you know, dinosaur names. I'm the dinosaur in the room here, according to this kid, you know. This is what dinosaurs used to be called back when they were dinosaurs. <laughs> I don't know. And his brother runs over to correct him and change something, and they pull back and forth on this dinosaur, and the, the head comes off, and I'm like, now I'm in trouble because we've pulled the head off this dinosaur, and I actually didn't touch it, but whatever. Something else so different from my generation when I was a kid. It was a light, it wasn't a party party, balloons party. It was just simply a light get together. They invited some friends over, you know, for, for dinner, drinks, whatever. And the two boys are there. When I arrived, we left here, the shop closed at 5.30, we left here quarter to six. It took us about an hour, we arrived there just before seven o'clock. We're the first ones in. House is nice, clean. They say, hello, come in, and sit down, grab a drink, you know, whatever. We sit down. House is super clean, all just perfect. Two boys are in their pajamas. This, to me, all seems completely, perfectly normal. These two boys, they're like, they're like four and two, or, or three and a half and, and two, or whatever. They're in their pajamas. And Dave is expecting, you know, whatever. The guests have come in. We say hello to the boys, chat with them a bit, play a little bit, look at the dinosaur book. And then Dave's thinking, the boys, of course, will be, you know, sent off to bed soon. Because it's like 7 o'clock, and then it's 7.30, and then it's 8. That's dinosaur thinking. That's not the way it works anymore. And I, if Marcel is listening, this is not criticism. This is the dinosaur observation. It was really, really strange. The boys joined the affair. They didn't scream and run around and spoil things. They joined the affair. They talked about dinosaurs. We talked about this. Somebody had a little game to play with them. They were part of the event. Not spoiling the event because they were there. They weren't drinking. They were eating grapes. Somebody brought grapes out and they stuffed their face with grapes. And they were still up and at it and running around when the last of us left. At what time again? What time was it? 10.30, 10.45 when we left. And they were still charging, charging around. And from Dave's dinosaur point of view, oh my 
God, the, we would have, in our pajamas, we would have been there until everybody comes, and then my mother or somebody would have said, okay, boys, uh, you met all the people, say, say goodnight now, and off you go. And me and my brother would have, you know, we would obviously we bow, we wouldn't bow to anybody, we would say, Good night, Mr. So and so. Good night, Mr. So and good night, Uncle John. Whatever. And the two boys, we would have disappeared, because there's no way that two little boys, preschool boys, would have been part of an evening event like that. We would have headed to bed. We would have had to head to bed, even if it was oh, do we have to, you know, boom, go to bed. And we would have been in bed and hearing all the chatting and talking in the living room and, you know, whatever. That's just the way it was. There's no way children would have been expected to be part of such an event, not at our age. So I don't know. I, I, again, absolutely, please, please, don't misunderstand me. I am simply observing here, mentioning something I'm observing. I'm not in any way, man, it was awful. They should have put those boys to bed. That's not what I'm trying to say. But I really, really am curious now. Is this, there's three or four things that could be here. I'm... British, this couple is not, and I'm 1950s, this is, this is 2024. Are we talking about a cultural difference here or the passage of time? Things are done differently these days. I don't know. Why don't I use an art glove? Am I not worried about touching the screen with my wrist? Well, I don't think this is a problem. This iPad does have a setting where I can tell it not to respond to touches of the skin. It responds only to touches of the tool. So I, I don't, art glove, is that something that stops the capacitance so you can touch safely? This iPad anyway doesn't, uh, doesn't need that. I can touch. I can still draw with a finger if I made an actual drawing motion. It understands what I want. But if I simply put my hand on it and draw, it doesn't pick up from my hand. So I think we're okay. I, if with older pads don't do that, I'm sorry, I don't know. Is that what they're called? Art gloves. I don't know about such a thing. I'm sorry. Hmm, Soka. So there is a thing. Is that an older iPad or, or something different? Okay, this is new to me. I'm sorry. Anyway, it seems like you guys have got that uh, covered. So, good. 858. So, what else have we missed here? Oh, missed, missed, missed. Look at this, my brain. What else have we missed here? I got emails. It's funny, I read the chat the other day, you know, and I had said something about a different topic. I said I got two or three emails on something. 
and, and people are, no, that means you got one email or whatever, whatever. No, it's not true. I got emails this week. Who did, what did I get? I saw a review first on my own before people started writing to me about this. Uh, it turns out that, is it, what's their name? Cyan, the company? The company who made the original Myst games, the original couple of guys, they are still together and they are still at it. I don't know how this all works. It turned into something called Ubisoft. It turned into different things. I know nothing about the history, but it turns out that Myst is back. Not the original Myst game, but the one that followed it, the one called Riven. It turns out, this was new to me, it was in my news feed last week, that there's been a remake in, in you know, modern graphic, uh, modern graphic style. A remake or remaster or, or uh, I don't know the correct terminology, I'm sorry. Anyway, I saw this myself, saw a quick review about it and thought, Dave, I want to do this. Dave, you're busy, work on your video script. Dave, I want to do this. I want to, to go back and enjoy the happy times of my childhood. <laughs> so, so it was good bird and bad bird on my shoulders there. Quack, 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 go buy it, go buy it. Get it, don't even think about it. You can't play games, forget about it, forget about it. So I went to the app store. This bird for a few minutes, this bird won. I clicked the link over to the app store. There it is. Oh my God. And then this bird says, Dave, check the system requirements. No, I have a brand new, well, it's not brand new anymore. This computer is a year and a half old. It's a MacBook, it's an M1 MacBook, which is actually on their list of supported hardware, but it's not my OS. I'm still on OS number 12. Mac OS Monterey, and they say no go. And I really, 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 really do not want the hassle of upgrading my OS because I know exactly what's going to happen. It's going to break my Photoshop. It's going to break something else. It's going to break something else. I'll spend six weeks fixing problems all so that I can download a game which I really don't have time to play. So I'm sure my computer will update to the new OS. I could then buy the game, but I am terrified of all the crap that will happen to my machine with that update. So for the moment, mm, mm, it would have been fun, but uh, I can't justify the risk right now, not at all. There's, I mean, you may think that I'm over, over worrying about this, but over the past few months, actually, we have been through this in spades. I have wasted, my God, endless amounts of time. Our hosting company over in Pittsburgh, our files are all hosted with a company called Pair Networks. And these are shared hosts. Some, some are, are virtual uh, machines. Some of them are shared with different people. And they are controlling the background software. This is what we want. I myself don't want to deal with uh, running Apache on a server and which version of PHP in my SQL I'm running. I don't want to do that. It's outsourced. But that means the update cycle is out of my control. And we got hit stunningly hard by that uh, about, we must have talked about it on stream, about uh, six weeks or so ago. The hosting company updated their SQL database uh, from 5.3 to 8, a huge jump from 5.3 to 8, and it clobbered, clobbered half of my uh, management software. And we're still actually, we're still not out of the woods on that one. I'm trying to find things I can do here easily and cleanly without getting into weeds here too many. There's little bits of kimono pattern we can do easily, I think. I really had wanted to do all the kimono patterns on a, on a single shot so that I can copy and paste them from a master copy.
So I'm really, really right now gun shy about any system upgrades. And I know the longer you put it off, the bigger the step is once you have to upgrade and the more trouble you get. I get it, I get it, I get it. What do you do? Pain, small pain in many doses or big pain in one dose? So anyway, Riven can wait. Okay, let's go to those circular kimono patterns. We can start one of those. We can do this. Oh, John's got an idea. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just buy a separate computer. Run a gaming computer and an office computer. <laughs> okay, I guess that's the solution. <laughs> I guess. Just wrap it up in the cost of the game, yeah. Someone's saying someone would recommend replaying the original one. I've got it, but it's a box set. What is it? It's on five DVDs. It's on, it's on my shelf back home in Ome. I've got uh, the Mist set, the Riven and Exile, the first three. But I've got them in their old original DVDs. There's no way I couldn't play that on anything I've got. Dave is not a gamer, but uh, me and my daughters, we had two or three games we really, really, really enjoyed and connected with. It was fabulous daddy-daughter time. We, we've talked about this before. The number one game that was hugely responsible for an immense amount of daddy-daughter bonding and pleasure and just all-around good fun, the game for us was uh, Oxid. O-X-Y-D. I'm sure now it doesn't exist anymore. It was a game called Oxid, which had multiple levels, and it really, really, really suited the triumvirate, triumph, the three of us that sat there and played. Dad supervising, one of my daughters having hugely good puzzle, uh, puzzle solving ability, and the other daughter having a rock steady ability on the mouse and the three of us together we just I, I can't even begin to express how much pleasure we got out of the different versions of that oxid game i think it's been uh, emulated these days is it called enigma something that starts with an e it's a six letter word starting with e i think the old oxid game is is toast but uh, I believe there is a form you can play it. And for me, that's, that's nostalgia with a big, huge capital N. My God, did we have fun with that. We're talking 1996, 1997, somewhere on there. No, earlier, earlier. I can't remember. I shouldn't say. I don't remember. Mid-1990s. 1996, if I had to say a single date. When did Oxid come out? I don't know. And then the original Mist, Riven, and Exile we played. We had our, our code book. Oh, it's Sadako time. 90906. Good morning, good morning. Yes, of course, sure, sure. I was just. Uh, yeah. Oh no! Put up maybe twenty-six or something. Yeah. I wasn't here yesterday afternoon, so they had it turned really low. You know, just freezing, yeah. absolutely freezing. Here. I was upstairs. I was out at the work office in the morning. And then I came to my office in the afternoon. Then we all went to Marcel's place last night.
<laughs> game conversation here. It's hot out there already, I guess, is it? Yes. So I'm sorry. Me report back in the Monday stream. Are you talking to me about this or is there something else going on I didn't see? Oh, Karen's going to update her Mac. <laughs> yeah, Karen, you first. <laughs> Let me know how it works or not. You first. It feels much better already. I know when I come here in the mornings like this, I don't put the air conditioner on. I, know. I whatever. It's a big building here. The air conditioner is a massive unit. Come on. And I really feel stupid turning it on when it's only me in the building. Now, of course, during the day, customers are here, staff are here. Of course, it's 36 degrees outside. We put the air conditioner on, of course. But sitting here by myself in the early mornings, you know, for this stream, I don't put it on. So Sadako's come in, common sense, get the shop ready for the day's activities. Click, click, click. She has put the systems on. And as I sit here now, I feel this waft of beautiful, cool, refreshing air come over me, you know. Like, Now these curls and squiggles, how much do these? I think these are kimono patterns. These are not, uh, this is not flesh. This is not supposed to be energetic. It's just a bare pattern on a piece of kimono. So to me, these are the kind of elements that can be cleaned up and straightened and smoothed without affecting the overall quality or feel or, or mood of the image. Maybe again, maybe I'm, that's not the right approach. But where you might want to leave marks in his face or his mouth, the kimono patterns, who cares? So Dave was going to neaten these up quite a bit. I saw last night that you tried to call by Skype. I wasn't here, I'm sorry. Uh, Marcella san had an invitation to everybody to go to her house yesterday, yesterday evening. A staff get together. She wants to say thank you. You know, when she had that accident a couple of months ago, mm -hmm. team members all helped and visited the hospital and stuff like that. So she she had a little sort of a thank you party, yes, thank you party for everybody. It's fine. It's okay. I was a bit nervous because the two little boys running around, but they behaved themselves quite well. It was okay. Mm -hmm. yeah.
Okay, actually we're at 9.15. I hadn't noticed the clock. The clock is moving so quickly today. There's days when the clock goes slow and I seem to get a lot done. And there's days when the clock just spins around and we're done. For show and tell, I'm going to ask Sadako-san if you can help me. And I'm not, this is, I think, not going to be any embarrassing thing. It's a question of reading stuff. But this is all, you know, those Kyoto, Kyoto. salt. And I think really they're probably mostly quite readable. Mm. Let me get the flask out of the way. This is red. Kyoto yes, Kimesho. so that, that one I got. Kyoto. Yes, yes, yes. That part I got yesterday. Thank mm. you. We did get that part. You shall. I got halfway through the book yesterday, and I think maybe on average about one every page I recognized or could read the, the what the, it was. It's Kyoto places and events. It's not all just physical locations. Let me try and find a setup here. This book is delicate. It's coming apart. I can show you. The the look. It's all. The previous, some previous owner ripped it apart a little bit and it's hanging now by a thread. So I've got to really be careful how, uh, how much I, I mis mishandle this thing. This is the front. Let's quickly zoom through some of the ones we saw yesterday. It's a strange book. The prints and pictures have the carving and f printing mood of something made by Unsodo in maybe the 1930s. And yet the paper and the packaging all looks like you know, something brand new from the 1970s or something. Even the outside cover and things. So it may be something that a private person has put together himself. We really don't know. It's hard to tell. I might, uh, if I can find examples of another copy of the same set, that would tell us something. And I was looking at it yesterday after we signed off the stream and the carving is so nice. The paper is thick and luscious and actually it's a bit, it's a bit too thick. It's so thick and heavy it starts to feel a bit like cardboard. And the places where there's embossing, the embossing is so deep you can jump down and walk around inside it. It's all Kyoto places or events. And quite real. We got about halfway through, like this is Nari, Nishijin Ori. So, so it's not so much a place name as a, a thing that's connected with mm, Kyoto. Features. So, so let's jump ahead to where we left off the other day. I think this was the last page we looked at the other day. And I was guessing that because of the broken tiles here, this was something that had a relation to maybe the old Genji Monogatari story. Oh, okay, broken down castle. Mm -hmm. Momoyama Castle, the, 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 the atto, what do you call it? The leftover footprint, the, the ruins of an old castle. So this is the a rooftop. family yes. crest. crest. Oh. Ah, it's a, it, it looks like a wisteria. Yeah. No, we speak Kiri. Kiri. Polonia. 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 Okay, soka, soka, soka. Mm. So only the loyal family are allowed to use in old days. Now how should we do this? Let's see. I want to get closer because the way you're seeing it there, if I <coughs> zoom in and try and move this book around. Okay, what have we got here then? Can we read this? Matsuri. Oh, look at that. I should have been able to read this. Yes. And we have our aluminum powder here used in many of these. Gion Matsuri. This, we knew this one yesterday. This is Ogurayama, the place where the... Uh, Hyakuninshu was born. I don't know the meaning of the symbolism here. These are like poetry cards, mm. so maybe that's what they're trying to show. And this is Oharame. Oh, wait a minute, let me get across. I've got to get... Here, Oharame, meaning mm -hmm. woman. Woman. And what's Carried the... Carried uh, small wood. It's a on basket. Top of their head. Mm -hmm. And it was a famous... Uh, that those ladies are carrying. So this ring would be the this coiled fabric ring goes on top of the head. The basket goes on top of this, yes. and we have like flowers and grasses. Somebody went well, gathering. Usually wood, mm. as far as I know. Look at that! I would never, in a million years, would have known what this represented. Mm. Interesting. Okay. Yeah. Do we know the next one down here then? Shioning, the name of that. It's temple. a temple. There must be an event. We don't mm, know. That I, place is famous with the maple trees. Mm, we can see. And what do we have the reference for this one? Suzume no yado. An old 
folklore. Suzume is sparrow, which we see here. And Oyado means the place of staying, the house, whatever. House. We don't, and there's gourds. There must be more to the story. We have different gourds, four of them, yeah, decorated with sparrow. This would be a moon. Mm. Not a moon. So Indeed. people are asking, this is one page. This is one page which is a single woodblock print with all these different scenes on it. Mm. So this would have been made, people are asking here, this would have been made from a piece of wood about the same size as the page here. And it would have been carved first with a key block and then different color blocks done. So this is one woodblock print with a bunch of different small scenes inside it. Did she say not moon? I was guessing that would mean maybe to represent it's the moon. Empty. Well, you think it's a hole? Oh, yes. I, oh. I don't know. From here, Can't be moon. I would argue, I think it's a black lacquer with a silver shape that I think would be representing a moon. Okay. Can't argue, don't know, don't know. There's lots of the she knows more than I do. And so. these are the same color. Well, of course, we've picked up to mm -hmm. minimize the number of wood blocks on the sheet, you know. Mm -hmm. As we didn't get to yesterday, some of these I did understand. Let's just let Sadako show us what these are. This one is a basket of fire. It's a basket. It'll be, it'll be a metal basket full of uh, taki, I don't know, wood, and it's on fire. And it would be... And the um, yozakura. Night, cherry. night cherries at Mount Enza. Okay, so the fire would simply be uh, illumination, Enjoy. decoration. Okay, okay. Mm -hmm. I suspect, too, we have a lot of uh, oxidization here. What you see here as these dirty patches, seen in the light here to me, this is metallic pigments. This would have been bronze pigment. So this would be <laughs> sparkly stuff falling off this fire basket. Someone's asking, would it have been difficult to get the registration correct? No specific problem. As I mentioned before, the paper is thick and, uh, and, and luscious, and it would have been a good quality paper that wouldn't stretch too much. What do we have here? I can't read. Can uh, something that you get caught. Okay. This is like a... The name. Kyo, mm, myself either, okay? Mm. Just pass it and move on. Kamo no Nagare. Oh yeah, this I could have got this. So, Kamo the Kamo River in the middle of Kyoto, this is Nagare. And we have the standard little uh, classic picture of Chidori. Kamo Chidori. Chidori, isn't it? See, these would be called plovers in English. These are the barriers to show that they, to, mm. to keep the river under control. They've got stone things wrapped up with bamboo, mm. binding the stones into these big, heavy things that uh, control the flow of the river and stop erosion. Looks like a basket. Miyako mm. Odori. So, Odori, Odori no koto. Miyako is the uh, capital city, another name for Kyoto. It'll just be generic, I think, just a festival, the show. Mm. Oh, this one we know. It's Daimonji, mm. but the place name... Nyoigatake. Hmm? Nyoigatake. Is that the name of the mountain? I don't know. Oh, no. I don't know either. They've, they've got mm. uh, Gatake, the name of a mountain here, and perhaps that's the mountain where they do the fire burning. They burn off a portion of the mountain every summer in the form of a giant character, Dai large. So I don't know. That. And that's the name of the mountain, she says. Right. The name of the mountain. Okay. And this is Sanjo Ohashi. Another one I can read. Woo! Sanjo. The bridges, the streets in Kyoto are numbered. Number one, two, three, four, five, six. And this is Sanjo, third street. And when they cross the river, it crosses on a bridge. So this is Sanjo Ohashi. Mm. And that's our, this is the, uh, what do you call it? The, 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 the famous bridge. Yeah. I don't know what they're called. What's the name of these things? I don't know. Po the posts of the bridge railings have a very, very famous shape. Mm. And as soon as we see this, we know we are in Kyoto on Sanjo Ohashi, or maybe Shijo, 4th Street. Someone's asking, do I have these prints in a different format like postcards? All I have is this one book. We just scored this last week on, on uh, Yahoo Auctions. The name of the thing? Mm. The, the post, the top of the post. What is it called? Giboshi. Giboshi as in hat? Kana? Hoji, 
fake treasure. These are fun. It's like a combination of a puzzle. And I don't know, you probably can't see it from where you are, but they are all, each one is a beautifully made classic little woodblock print. There's a ton of embossing on this, which is not showing up under the light here today, I'm sorry. They're beautifully made prints. It's not anything to do with ukiyo-e style. We have blobs of color. There are no outlines for the most part. These are very much prints made in the style of what's done in Kyoto. It's not ukiyo-e type outlines. Where are we? Can we start? Can we start? I'm here right now. So can we start this one? This is... Nishi Honganji. Oh, just a straight temple name. Nishi Honganji. We have actually, it's funny, we have Higashi Honganji right here across the street. This is Komeidera? Nani? Kodaiji. Kodaiji. Another temple. It must be something there. Oh, no, wait. That's, no, that's this way. Wait. That's the name for this one. The show? Mm. That's this, that's this, that's this. No idea. Something to do with it. It's beautifully done. Again, really sad. The metal pigments here have all oxidized. This would have been, it would have looked like gold, beautiful bronze against the vermilion and white. It would have looked so nice when it was original. Shokokuji. No, we're, we're here, I'm sorry, we're down here. Something. Mori san, wow. I don't know, but that must be also. So. Is that the name of temple? But actually, just a minute, the names don't match up here. That's, just a minute, let me zoom out here. What's what's going on? The name and the picture. This would be this one, the, the old temple. Hi. This, I. Okay, then this would be this one. The, that would be this one. Okay. Nani Jinja, Nani Kitano Jinja. I think they could have done their layout a little bit more carefully, mm. actually. Oh, Kurodani. And this is actually, it's out of town. It's not in Kyoto, mm. Kurodani. And for someone like me, I don't have any idea what the story they're telling here. There's an old pine tree. Kurodani is one of the places in Japan most ancient for making nice hosho paper. Kurodani mm. is a paper making mm. village. Although that's not related here, I'm sure, at all. Yeah, this must be this one. Oh, would this be... Okay, we've seen on the Kamo River in summer where the places, the restaurants at the side of the river, they put the terraces out and people sit on the terraces, sometimes even with their feet in the mm -hmm. river to, show, to keep cool. Oh, Matsuri. Oh, Matsuri. I could have got that too. Holy Hulk Matsuri. Oh, this is an easy one. Even anybody can get this one. This is King Kakuji. Uh, kin, 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 kakuji. kin Kakuji. It is right. I was right. We had earlier on an earlier page, Gin Kakuji. This is King Kakuji, the famous gold temple. And this, I presume, must be the phoenix decoration. It must mm. be up at the very top of it. I don't know. Yes, I got to. So Yasaka, that's a place in Tokyo. Is there a Yasaka also in Kyoto? I don't know. So. Seems so. Yasaka Pagoda. Yasaka is the place name and to. And then this must be something to do with kimono. Kimono using. Yes, okay, okay, okay. So one of the dyeing methods, and these would be what, drying in the sun or be washed in the river and then drying out in the wind, kind of? Yuzen is a form of dyeing, fabric mm. dyeing. Famous. But this is Kamo, no connection. Is it the river? The Kamo same kanji? Kamo. It's the same kanji, okay. Mm. I think there's one sheet left. There's one page left for this. A full set of 60 scenes of Kyoto. Where are we here? We're down at the bottom here first. I can't read this, I'm sorry. Pardon me? Daigo no hana. Meaning? Daigo ten. Is it pla the place same name? Family Christ. The royal families. So it's a, a place name here or a... Mm, place it? name, I think. Daigo. 
ますけど。うん、そうかそうか。いや、there's an emperor called Daigo でしょ。うん、okay. And again, this looks black and dark for you. I'm sorry, it's oxidized.、Mm. This would have been brilliant, shining,、uh, brilliant and shiny. Is it the same? I said also on all. So,、uh, Kitty. Ammonia, so. Same. But the same crest we saw before? Or? Mm. Mm. Something. Do kakudo? So. I don't know the connection.、Mm. I don't either. Do kakudo, a, a place name, maybe a place known for Ikebana or something? I don't、mm. know. I'm sorry. I can't read this temple name、Mibudera. either. Pardon me? Mibudera. And we have、um, something on the sake cup. This is a traditional t y p e of sake cup. Ah, so a gosho,、uh, just a generic term referring to the imperial family. So, so. It is the place, imperial families.、Mm, mm. Ah, the、Living. name of the actual,、mm. I see, okay, okay. And then the last one, oh, got this, this is Heian Jinja. Jingu. Jing, okay, sorry, jumping <laughs> to conclusions here. <laughs> And what are we seeing? We're actually seeing a depiction of, this, of, the, tent, of the shrine itself. Right, so, so. Can we get the embossing? I was trying to talk to you about the embossing. This looks like white and pink. If it's, it's edible. There's so much rich, deep embossing here that it's just edible. Nami san, good morning. Good morning. Can we find it? No idea. Can't show, it doesn't matter. Very nice bokashi here. They are. It's all so tasteful. You know, half of me, because of my own training here in my own ukiyo-e style, half of me doesn't sort of like it sometimes. Because all the pigments have white, opaque parts mixed in. So we never see a pure white of the paper. It's always a bit muddy to me. But I do have to agree, they just look beautiful, of course. You know, it's a different kind of printing. Anytime you're seeing white here, like these white flowers, this is not the white paper that you see when we're doing printmaking usually. This white flower has been printed with opaque pigment, and you can see it's much whiter than the toned paper below it. That must have been done up here first, too. They must have printed a cloud of white here first, flat, then they printed pink with a carved pattern to force the white to be embossed. Very much different style of printing than we're used to here at this end of the country. But beautiful nonetheless. Come on, okay. Did I miss one? Yes. What have we got? It's one of those old fashioned hairdresses to show for a, yeah, for for a male、me. courtier. For a male. We saw this in the. Hair decoration. And what's the. I'm sorry, Sarah. Come、what's、on, okay. Okay.、Oh, referring to the actual object,、mm, the hairdress. No, 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 no. On the horseback ride. Oh, these are stirrups. Mm, this、But、would be this this is yep, the hairdress. Yes. Okay. Isn't there horse racing like they do the Yabusame down there as well? Similar. Sure. So, yeah. so, so. so there's our book. It came from Yahoo Auctions last week, cost us 2,000 yen. I'm not going to take it apart. It seems like it's been put together, you know,、uh, it's a bit of an anachronism. It's put together as an,、uh, an album in the post war period. But the prints are clearly pre war, but I don't see anything, any sense that they're going to be damaged by longer、uh, storage here. So, all I'm going to do is this we're going to get sheets of clean, thin washi, put them inside each one so that the prints are not facing a darker paper. And then we'll just put it back in the collection. Very, very nice item. Delicate craftsmanship, fun to look at. Even a bit of Japanese language testing for Dave here. Okay, thank you very much. Yep,、yeah, 2000 yen. That's what I got because people here are just not interested in this stuff anymore. Okay, thanks very much. It's now Saturday morning. I'll be back here two days from now. And I have got some decisions to make. I have got to get working on that explosion. So if I'm a good boy, Over the weekend here, I will get that explosion drawn, and we could be carving on Monday. Or maybe I will have the drawing all ready for pasting down, and on Monday, best plan for it, we'll be pasting and starting carving. If I can get that far over the weekend, we'll see how it goes. Thanks very much, and I'll see you again in a few days.
Hey, it's going to be hot today again. So thanks again. Bye for now. <laughs>